If the past few months of the COVID-19 global pandemic have taught us anything, it is that change is constant and our modern world is one of deep-rooted uncertainty. Words like resilience, adaptability and flexibility have almost become the mantra of our times. Education has not escaped this phenomenon. Indeed, in some quarters, the field of lifelong learning has almost been touted as a panacea for all of life's ills and challenges in our world's current turbulent state. Lifelong learning can promote skill development for the knowledge economy. Lifelong learning can generate a greater sense of social cohesion and active citizenship. Lifelong learning can deliver social justice through the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And yes, lifelong learning does have an enormous contribution to make to society. But this is not an easy feat, nor a guaranteed success for every learner. It has been generally accepted that the idea of a lifetime career or a fixed trajectory for one's lifespan is now more or less redundant for most people. With persistent change in our evolving world, the need for us all as human beings to transition to new phases in our lives is ever present. Building on the work of colleagues in Ezrea and Yukon and on the contributions from scholars like John Field, this newly established research network will focus on this theme of transitions as it applies to lifelong learning. We will focus on the transition into, through and out of lifelong learning programmes from the perspective of the learner, the educator and the education system as a whole. While we learn throughout our lives, the quality of our learning often depends on the quality of our educational experiences. Good outcomes early in life can set us up for good outcomes throughout our lives. For many, early opportunities are poor. For many, opportunities are interrupted because of illness, natural disasters, economic crises, migration and any number of reasons. Many learners have poor outcomes at different stages of their learning journeys. Some have forced transitions out of education, but almost universally, in today's world, learners will need transition into or back into education, not just once, but many times in their lives. In focusing on the transition into lifelong learning, we will explore the issues of widening access and participation, given that adult learners are not a homogenous group. We will consider how we can target underrepresented groups and minorities and how we can help them to overcome the barriers to access that they face. We will explore questions like how can we provide opportunities for learners from migrant backgrounds, for ethnic minorities, for learners with disabilities or learners with mental health or addiction issues. We will explore themes such as the recognition of prior learning and validation of non-formal and informal learning to assess how these practices might assist learners in their transition into lifelong learning programmes as a means of acknowledging their accumulated lived experience and the wealth of prior knowledge that they bring with them as they transition into the role of a learner at various stages in their lives. We will contemplate the conceptualisation of a learner and address the clash of identities that lifelong learners may experience as they try to juggle their multiple identities as professional, practitioner, parent or carer, all with being a learner. Adult learners can potentially be more vulnerable in their transition into learning than a typical undergraduate student might be. Sometimes these learners can have very limited experience of formal education, or for those that have, it can sometimes have been quite a poor or traumatic experience, resulting in a lack of self-confidence and self-belief. In addition, these learners often have many more additional pressures and competing demands for their time in terms of their family life, careers, financial responsibilities, etc. This can result in a form of psychological turmoil for learners as they try to battle their way through a type of identity crisis as they adjust to engaging with a structured learning context again. For many, they suffer from a type of imposter syndrome where they feel they do not belong in this new world. So it is important for educators to understand where these learners are transitioning from so that we can better support them during their transition in. Our approach will also acknowledge that access alone is not enough, 
but learners must also be supported during their transition through lifelong learning initiatives. This network will examine pedagogical and andragogical approaches to developing curricula for successful lifelong learning interventions, where students have the opportunity to actively engage and participate in order to develop their human, identity, social and cultural capital. For instance, examples of applied learning, problem-based learning, reflexive learning, community-based learning might all be explored. Lifelong learning can often occupy space in the periphery of mainstream education, and we will assess if this impacts on equity of access to student services. We will also consider strategies for supporting students in their transition through their lifelong learning endeavour, exploring activities relating to pastoral support, the acquisition of academic skills and preparedness for study, peer-to-peer -peer networking, reflexive learning, etc. Finally, we will also need to consider how we can support learners in transitioning out of learning at the end of their programme. How do we instill a belief in learners that learning is a lifelong process and that their working lives may have numerous vertical and horizontal transitions? How do we prepare them to realise that as they graduate from a programme, it is not necessarily the end of their learning journey, that this is not a finite process, that their lives may not follow an entirely linear course, and that they may return to learning many more times during the course of their lives? How do we build their resilience to cope with other possible identity shifts that they may experience in their lives? These are just some initial thoughts on the potential areas for exploration in this new research network. Through comparing and contrasting practice in Europe and Asia, I believe we can significantly add to knowledge and best practice in this field. I hope that I have sparked your interest in this topic and I would very much welcome those of you interested to help me build this network and share this journey with colleagues across the world. I look forward to hearing from you all.